All right, what's up, Who Dat Nation, and thanks for joining us on the Dome Patrol Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff, and I'm actually not drinking for the second week in a row. That's not vodka. That's water. Cause I what? Have, yeah, I'm, I'm recovering from a cold this week. So last week it was a hangover. This, I actually still might be hungover from the LSU Bama game. Did you? You should have at least mixed it with some with some berry burst, right? I could have. I could have. But yeah, I'm going with the water. Okay. Oh, that's vodka. All right. Everybody. <laughs> so okay, last week everybody panicked except us. Uh, Sean Payton, Drew Brees, Cam Jordan, right of the ship after taking two weeks off apparently, and thankfully the Bucks are who we on the Dome Patrol podcast thought they were. That come. And Jameis Winston must have had crab juice on his hands because he was <laughs> the ball kept slipping out into the Saints' defense's hands or something. Anyway, the Houdat Nation breathed a sigh of relief after realizing that the Falcons game was, in fact, a fluke. Again, that we on the Dome Patrol podcast said that it was, and that is in the past. So this week, it's all about celebrating the victory against the Bucks. And keep your seatbelts on, keep your hands and legs inside your earbuds at all times. Enjoy the show. Jason, welcome to the show. I like the new backdrop. What's your number? Uh, it's It seems like you not drinking vodka, you struggled a little bit with that intro. The, the water really, really doesn't do you any favors with this. I'm better when I'm drunk. You know, uh, yes, I do have an official backdrop. We hung our first picture in the room, the Drew Brees Blue Dog uh-huh. poster in the background. Some of you can see it. Um, but I'll, I'll go with just the one. Got another uh, a glass of wine. I went back to the glass. Last week with the cup was a little too glassy, so I'm, I'm back to the glass. <laughs> I still got the box. It's downstairs somewhere. <laughs> the, the, all right. So uh, And then we also have Chloe Bubba, Courtney, he, a.k.a. He, he builds one house, and all of a sudden he's fancy. Right. Yeah, he's got a Drew Brees portrait on his wall. You know, the rest what of room hey. is that, Jason? Hey, what's I that? Room. <laughs> what uh, room uh, is that? Uh, I guess that's the room you'll be sleeping in when you stay here. Nice. Me or him? him. Me, him, him. Whoever. Me. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all could, if y'all want, y'all could share the bed. I mean, you know, put a little divider in the middle. Okay. <laughs> Courtney, you drinking? Oh, Are you drinking? Do you have a number? Point five. Ah, as is tradition. For those of you new to the Dome Patrol podcast, Courtney is one of the founding fathers, one of the very first original members of the Dome Patrol podcast back in 2010. First episode, he was also on the second episode, and I think the one he was on our episode. long lost he was on our long lost video episode. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh, you could you could probably call him a Dome, a Dome Patrol elder. He's one of the elders, he, you know. He's a visionary. He was trying to live stream before live streaming existed. Before it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time we really thought <laughs> yeah there was, a, there was a time we really thought we were going to do a public access show and, and courtney was courtney was very gung-ho yeah anyway. we, had, we had a drive on it mm-hmm. yeah all right well with us we have brendan carpinella on the live stream first time there who that y'all jason lake says who that wheels holy shit notifications worked what's up fellas yes wheels whenever you follow the dome patrol podcast on facebook you will be notified davis douglas is checking in mordecai How's it going, guys? Uh, a couple other people are watching. Say hi if you want to. Remember, live stream means you comment. I read it by interrupting Courtney and Jason in the middle of their conversation. Uh, in the meantime, let's get into game recap. And this week's game recap is going to be better than last week's game recap. Am I right? A bit. I think so. Yeah? Okay. A bit. A bit. All right. So uh, Saints beat the Bucks in defensive fashion, uh, defensive showcase, or was it? I mean, it, it was a lot of ball control. Even even at the beginning of the game, I mean, we didn't score a touchdown, had to kick that field goal, but they can the first quarter. I mean, we had the ball for what 10, 11 minutes, which was the complete opposite of last week. With that's basically what the Falcons did to the Saints last week. Okay. So even though <laughs> so we took a page out of their playbook. I mean, even though, you know, at one point it's like, man, we did all this work and we only kicked two field goals out of it. All it takes is for them to get one touchdown and they've got the lead. But at least you, you kind of set the tone for the game, I think, right there. Well, the running game was working from the get-go. I mean, Kamara had a number of good runs and Murray had a number of good runs right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Uh, just made it a lot easier to hold on to the ball that way. Especially uh, considering Tampa supposedly, you know, they got a good – front what three or four and tampa was very good tampa was was number one against the run coming into the week that's deceiving i mean when you go down as many points as they have like teams don't 
Well, wait, that uh, just flipped. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. The, Tampa's Bang. not going up on teams to to force them to 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 abandon the run. No, but yeah, actually, teams would be running a lot on Tampa. But Tampa, well, Tampa, you act like Tampa's like one and seven. They're not. They're a decent well, team. They're frisky. They? They're yeah. three and seven. Yeah. I mean, they did beat the Rams, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. See. No, you're right. They're you're, they're not good. <laughs> but, Farmer's checking in, hey Chris. Uh, but but I will say, um, Camaro just looked healthy. Healthy. You know, yep. he, he looked oh, he looked like the real Camaro. 154 all-purpose yards. All right. And granted, well, t- take out take out the kicker. Kicker okay. returns don't count. So 100 and some odd. Okay. Rushing, receiving yards. So I mean, well, you would have to say last week. There's no way he was 100. percent They rushed him back last week, but now he's full force. Or did Sean Payton realize? Oh yeah, that's what we use him for. <laughs> it's just weird that they didn't use him last week at all. I mean, I don't know. Again, we, last week was just a weird game. Chalk it up to a weird game. All right. But but yeah, but he definitely looked healthy. Got him a shit ton of work in the passing game. You know, ran the ball over 100 yards against Tampa. It was just a good ball control. It, it was it was a solid game. And and you know, we kind of figured they'd bounce back. They're not gonna have two duds in a row. Yeah, all right. Blaine's checking in. Uh, Farmer, how you been, Scott? Oh, they're, they're talking to each other in the live chat. Oh my! It, it's like it's like it's like Jeff and Greenbaum's text. Jeff, we got a three-way text. Jeff says, "Hey, Scott, did my <laughs> sons lose their drone in your backyard?" I'm like, "Why am I in this conversation?" <laughs> Because we didn't want to leave you out. All right. Okay. All right. So you talk about the rushing game. All right. So take the whole Saints rushing game. This is last – well, not last week we didn't run for over 100 yards, but the week before that we did. But between Latavius Murray and Kamara, Present. Ha, uh, with just the two of them combined for over 100 yards rushing against Tampa Bay. Um, Breeze had time to throw the ball and – Who do you expect to add to that number? What? <laughs> Who else you expect to add to that number? Taysom like, Hill. Be surprised it's just or... Taysom Hill. Uh... <laughs> Zach Line, man. Come on, Zach Line. I think hey, Zach, Zach Line, Line did Zach have the 103rd yard, 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 I think, or something like that. He had like a four yard run on a short, on the third and one or something like that. He, he got he, he, he got him over the 100 yard uh, barrier. He yeah. was that final push they needed. Yeah. But either, but the, I get, yeah, you're right. Okay, so <laughs> the point being between that and Breeze having time to throw the ball, a, You've been looking for uh, what's his name, Easton, to show up. He comes in, fills in for Pete, and he actually played really well. So, how is he one of those guys that is? I think and Peyton's talked about those guys, or maybe you have, Jason, that are, they're they're not good on the practice field, but suddenly you put them in the game and they show up. You know those kind of guys. I don't know what the deal is with him. I'm glad that he played well. I mean, you never heard his name. I'm glad that he played well, but again, it's like, well, if. What, what did they see that made them not dress him out until this week? I mean, I'm just I'm just curious. It's just been kind of a just this giant four million dollar mystery. It's 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 weird. They were saving it, him for the second half of the season. It's also been one game. Let, let, let's not crown him as as off the lineman of the year yet. Like he had one, <laughs> you know, could have been scheme. Like you don't know. Like slow down before we start handing out O lineman of the year awards. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not giving. I'm not. I'm, I'm just happy that he that he showed up and he didn't suck at. Like that's what. Like he showed up. The fact that he didn't dress out, I was worried. It's either him or Clap. We might get. You know, we're, we're gonna suck, Clap. and they didn't suck. You know, at least it's it's something. I mean, it's it's more than what we've gotten the, the first ten weeks. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's a good thing that he played well. Let's just not all well, of a sudden. I mean, like, where's he been? He's got to be front runner for yeah. Pro Bowl now, right, Courtney? <laughs> What's that? He's got to be a Pro Bowl front runner at this point. That's something you would think. I know you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe he'll be the the first Pro Bowler alternate since he just he comes in when needed. <laughs> All right, Greenbaum said Easton is the opposite of Butler. Yeah. Butler. Remember, remember Camp Superstar? Remember for like three oh, weeks? Oh, he the old Butler? Yeah, okay. I was thinking old lineman. <clears throat> yeah. He, I got you. Yeah. He said opposite, so. All right. Okay, so another thing, again, contrasting from last week to this week or how they adjusted to the egg, the goose egg that they laid or whatever. Uh, 28 run plays. Whereas what was it last week was 11. This week, 28 run plays, 36 pass plays. Actually, and point of note, I think, did Tampa throw the ball like 50-something times, by the way? 52. Yeah. Uh, so 
you think last week Sean Payton kind of didn't realize as the game was going on that they'd only run the ball 11 times and this week he was like, no, we have to run. It's probably a little bit of game planning and then all of a sudden the game got out of, out of hand. Last week? That's my guess, yeah. And the, was it plan to it, throw it more and then all of a sudden the, the game got out of hand and you had to throw it more. I, but it, it never really got out of hand until the very end last week, though. Well, we couldn't. We never moved the ball. Well, score no. wise, I get what you're saying. Both right, like, you. score wise, it never got out of also, hand. But to Courtney's point, like we were, we a lot it of felt out of hand. Third. It sure felt out of hand in the first quarter. It was second and long and third and long a lot of times. Mm. Yep. Yeah, we still had, still had a lot of penalties this week. You know, that yeah. went great. The flags, we still got a little. That was the only thing we didn't fix was the uh, discipline because we did get, and it'll come up in tweets about the refs, but. I, it did feel like the Saints were offensive, if if you know what I mean. Like their play was offensive. <laughs> and what do you like, think? I mean they they committed a lot of those penalties that they were called for. It wasn't phantom calls. Well, I mean there were there were one or two that were like, eh. I mean really, but that's typical though. That's that's classic NFL. I guess, yeah. I mean, officiating is pretty bad, and I don't know. Maybe we're just programmed to feel like we're getting dicked over every week because it seems like we get dicked over a lot. But yeah. Oh, Justin Accardo. Hello. Thanks for watching. Uh, oh, I, I see Justin. You you just watch it when Courtney's on. Okay. Uh, this is some, that's this some old South. This is some old Southeastern uh, shenanigans. <laughs> uh, Mordecai Saints says we don't have to worry about Pro Bowl this year, guys. That's true. Hopefully, Hopefully. Michael Leonard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michael Leonard's checking in. He's got to listen at work. Uh, all right, let's talk about Jared Cook real quick. So, remember, <laughs> remember earlier in the year when we were like, where's Jared Cook? What's up with that? And then for the last, it feels like, three games, maybe four, Jared Cook has been what we all hoped he would be whenever we signed him. I mean... I think he's healthy. He, he, he wasn't, and now he is? I'm guessing, yeah. I, I know a lot of that goes on, and that would be my guess. I hope his back is okay after that catch, that touchdown catch yesterday. Was it his back, or was he more like concussed? Yeah, uh, his, his head hit uh, hit a little bit, but it wasn't like one of those like like really head snap back hit the ground. I mean, I mean, you know, he was up there like fucking six feet in the air. I think it was just his body just lands like that. But I mean, I don't know for sure. I, I thought I heard on the radio today it was a more concussed concern. Um, I think it was Gus Cattengill's show. It was uh, okay. Well, I mean, it it it, it could be. I mean, I yeah. I kind of rather that than his back. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, he can come yeah. back from a concussion. He finished the game he played, right? I mean, he didn't. Yeah, come yeah, out of yeah, the- yeah, yeah. He he got more catches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sansbury's checking in, and uh, maybe he's not a pelican, right? You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I was just saying, Sans- Chris Sansbury is checking in. Scott Raymond said, go Lions. All right. Um, and then, so talking about tight ends, Sean Payton in his post-game press conference was talking about Josh Hill. Now, he got hurt. He got yeah. concussed. He, he yeah. got concussed. And he, like, Sean, Sean Payton, Payton was, was crestfallen. <laughs> <laughs> it's his boy. Well, he's, willing to run, he's willing to run reverses with, with, with him. <laughs> That's his boy. Come on. Oh, it's seven years ago, whenever it was. <laughs> and it's an unforgettable flag. <laughs> yep. Uh, 28-3, no, never point, forget. My point was, in the post-game conference, Sean Payton, actually, you're right, Jason, that's his boy. He said, you know, there's that was the biggest kind of like adjustment that they had to make to in the game. He says, because so many of their plays involved Josh Hill and they took some time with their play calling and adjusting who can we substitute in? Who can, what plays can we still use? What plays can we not use? <laughs> All because of Josh Hill. And you don't realize how important he is to this offense. And you know, not everybody has to be a pass catching phenomenon. Phenom. Yeah, we don't have many of those on the team. Phenomena. Phenomena. But but getting back to Cook, it is it is nice getting a you know this is. Well, I'm kidding. He's concussed. He's he's right. Yeah, but he's not going to play next week. But but having a reliable pass catcher that you know, like Reese Reese talked about. Look, he was up there. I had to get it to him where only he can get it, and he's got. I mean, he's fucking. A, seems like seven four, 
I know he's not, but when you when you got a guy like that and you can use him, I mean, it's a big boost to this offense. Well, it's also it's, magnified when your third and fourth receivers suck. Like, I mean, he's your third option when the second option's a running back, and and your third option is a tight end. I mean, it's it's magnified even more by the absence of Ginn and Traquan and Lil and, Jordan and, and Kirkwood and Lil Jordan and Butler and, <laughs> and, and whoever else. And put right. a pin on Traquan. It's something I wanted to bring up now that you you mentioned him. But Mordecai did say if y'all watched Breeze's post game interview, uh, he goes on about Jared Cook's stature and height for like a solid minute, admiring him. Like Breeze, you want to talk about the, if Josh Hill is Peyton's boy, then Jared Cook is Breeze's boy. I mean. Breeze has like an instant love affair with him, which is good. Breeze loves his and, tight ends. Well, and, and he's produced the last few weeks, and he's he's our our second best pass catch, you know, non running back pass catcher, non running back. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, like like Courtney said, Kam- I mean, Kamara is number two. I mean, Kamara had ten catches this week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Vins right. and Burks checking in. Uh, Justin uh, says brain versus back. Yeah, you know, same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's all connected somehow in the, over there. Uh, Greenbaum says the door Hill is the, Hill is the doorway. That's right. Sean Payton said it's like losing your front door. That's how that's what he said about Josh Hill. He's the front door of this offense. Well, well Sean likes to put it in his back door. Right. <laughs> what? That yeah. don't you talk about <laughs> hey. Sean Payton that way? I love the guy. What? Not just, that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just making a joke. <laughs> I, I tried my Matt Regas laugh. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said something about Traquan Smith, Courtney. Then there was a play that you know Traquan may not be the best pass catcher, but he's a blocking receiver. And I feel like that's kind of Sean Payton's whole thing about signing guys is you got one who catches, everybody else blocks for him. Because on that Michael Thomas touchdown, I think it was the big one where he made that cut and scored the touchdown on uh, Traquan Smith laid. A guy out on uh, i mean i don't know it was just it made me realize traquan isn't on this team for his catching ability we drafted him for his catching ability well that's not why he's he stayed for his catching ability they didn't draft him because he's a good blocker oh so man he's blocking he he's blocking receivers man third he, round got it that's why you, that's why you forgive a guy for not catching ted Ginn. i don't know maybe he's a good blocker too sometimes but <laughs> Take can barely catch. Hold on, slow down. That's what I said. He's got to be a good blocker. <laughs> but he did. He, Take did did catch balls this week. And I got to give him a little credit thing about Josh Hill. Like six years ago, talking about Josh Hill, and you jumped all over me for that too. And that is why he stays on this team is not for his catching ability. It's for his oh, blocking God. ability. He's a blocking. Well, In fact, he's the in front position is door blocking. of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Corny had a point. What? The tight end position is 50% blocking. Yeah. The receiver, 20%, 15%. Right. right. But they forgive 20% and 50. You're right. The the missing 30% is dropped passes. <laughs> <laughs> missing 30% is how much time he's going to miss due to injury. Oh. I mean, hey, it's, it's true so far. <laughs> Jeff, I don't think you need to be talking about percent, though, with your – Oh, them, we're going like, to move on. Four interceptions. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> and had 17 and 15. I swear. <laughs> look, that was like five in the morning. I was composing that. <laughs> I was doing math and all shit. Nah, Miss Day Ross didn't help me out. <laughs> she did nothing for me. All right. Four interceptions in two seconds. Did you see that comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't like it. All right. I liked it. Oh, did you? All right. Four interceptions in two sacks without Lattimore. Right? Uh, do we need a crisis <laughs> in order for this defense, for this team to play well? I mean, it seems like when we're 100% healthy, everybody shows up and they're just kind of like, hey, everybody's here, so we don't have to try hard. But take Lattimore out of the equation, and all of a sudden the defense becomes great again. Takes, you know, I don't know. I guess the real question or the real comment is, like, talk about how awesome our defense actually is. But that's – look, they, they – they were they, able to overcome the Lattimore injury. They stepped up, and I feel like they should have had another sack or two. Maybe maybe one got called back by a penalty. But, I mean, you can tell from the beginning of the game, the pass rush was there. The defensive back stepped up. Eli Apple stepped up, you know, big time. Even P.J. Other than – look, they had some some holds in the backfield, some penalties. And that kind of sucked. But, but for the most part, they held their own. Uh, they did – look – Thank God O.J. Howard sucks. That got us that first pick. But when, when, once you got the first one, you knew more were going to come. And, yeah, the, the defensive backs played really well. And, look, Apple's going to be a free agent after the season. He's still very young. 
he's in a good spot. He likes all the guys here. I mean, uh, I don't want to start th- <laughs> thinking of the off season, but th- that's a guy that he's 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 going to get a nice contract, and that's you kind of want to keep him around. He's number one cornerback talent. Yeah, at least since he's been traded here, yeah. for sure. Y'all just make sure y'all treat his mama right, because you know if she says you stay with the Saints, he's going to stay with the Saints. Oh, he, he say I anything like bad. About, yeah, I started yeah. following her recently. Yeah. She's awesome. Uh, I do not ever want to be on her bad side. That's why. I no, you it. definitely don't in want to say anything. Listen to the show. We're your friend. We Eli love Apple you. is the best cornerback in Saints history, right. and his mom is the best team mom. <laughs> right. Y'all should do some of those. Me. Y'all should do some of those Campbell soup uh, soup ads. Right. All right, all right. So, so you, all right, the interceptions. What I had to notice was uh, the grimace and the limping that. Jameis Winston did after that third pick, like for those last five minutes. I'm not buying that he was hurt. I think at that point he was kind of trying to save as much face as he could. Like, ah, that's the only reason I'm throwing all these interceptions. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And then even after that, because like, every play after that, he was fine until he threw his fourth interception. And then they put the camera on him after the fourth. And suddenly he's like, ah, I'm hurt. I'm hurt again. I'm hurt. <laughs> I mean, that's how they, they – you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna miss Jameis Winston when he's out of the <laughs> NFC South. I know because that's that that's an instant two or three picks a game, guaranteed when you go against him. Yeah, he's hot garbage. Yeah, now, he'll he'll be he'll be a backup. You know he'll have a long career as a backup. But no, I'm a backup. I think he'll be a guy that bounces to, from bad team to bad team, looking for a starting gig. Yeah, like I think he'll just be a bad starter. Or bad team. Actually, now that, now that you say that, he sounds like a perfect Redskin. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Like that would be the franchise. That they go like, oh yeah, let's take Jameis. Uh-huh. Well, uh-huh. about they did show that you know his the number of turnovers. Y'all saw that stat during the game. The number of turnovers in your first five years. It's a ton. Whatnot, and it's it's up there. Like he's like the fourth or fifth highest in the history of the NFL. Do you know though? Like he's not, and there's some shitty ass quarterbacks in that list, except for one, Peyton, yeah, Peyton. Manning. Is like the number two all-time interception <laughs> in the first five years. I mean, he did have Jim Moore as a coach for his first three. His first years. year or two, he threw a ton of interceptions. Yeah, he yeah he oh. led the league in picks like his first year or two. Yeah, so maybe James I imagine, Winston. I would imagine those five years that were all his first year or two were the majority of them. Yeah, right. But if you look at year six, he's got like ten picks. That's yeah. it. But James yeah. Winston is not a uh, Peyton Manning. No, but it, it's been fun. It's been fun going against him the last five years. Yes, it has. All right, I'm gonna move on unless y'all have anything left about the game. Um, I'm trying to think. <clears throat> no, just you know, a nice. I mean, we knew they would bounce back, and and they did. Yeah, they beat a team that they should have beat. You know, it was maybe a little worry, like man, if we lose a second in a row, okay, now we might start to panic a little bit. But they came out and played well. All right. Courtney, anything on you? I'm good. All Sunday's right. going to be a big Carolina. Yeah, and we'll talk yeah. about that in a little while. But first, let's do some look at him tweets. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look at your math one again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I swear, something. something. It's no, that, come on. Don't, it's uh, fuzzy uh, math. It's George W. Well, Bush I, I, did my calculation. George W. Bush has, has joined the, the whole Patrol podcast. What, what the, me, though, the whole point of the tweet was for you to throw a jab at Thomas Hab. Not a jab. I guess a jab. For Thomas having more. Let's percent see what you think my point was. The whole point was the math, which was wrong. <laughs> and it was basic math. That's what I don't get. No. Like, it, I wasn't it, trying to throw a jab. It, it wasn't. It wasn't like was it was sign and cosine. How awesome he is. I was actually showing how big of a piece of our offense he is. It wasn't a jab. Right. You were making a point that the percentage was more than the that other two. That one guys equals had. two. I know. Yeah, that one equals two. And, and it wasn't. I'm off by two percent. Sorry. I'm off by two percent when we're talking about six hundred catches. Three hundred. No, you were talking about. You talking about hundred percent. It was two numbers. It was seventeen plus fifteen. It was. Oh, it was. Well. It was literally first was first grade math. Three numbers. It was three receivers because it was something fifteen plus ten plus ten. It was fifteen twenty five. Yeah, thirty five percent. And I said thirty five. Right. Oh god, that makes it. That that's so complicated. Is less than thirty two percent or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
I did like how you tried to throw it off. Oh yeah, it was five o'clock in the morning. Bullshit. Find the time stamp on the on that it tweet. Was. It was okay, five thirty. I don't know. It was like freaking. I just woke up and Cat yeah, Carroll had, had pasted it, posted some tweet about some kind of production or whatever, and I was like, let me one up that one. I, and I failed. I get it. Okay, I apologize <laughs> for the tweet, but at least I don't go back and delete tweets when I'm wrong. I let it sit there and for in eternity. Who did that? Everyone Who else that? in America, the president. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but the president does a lot of dumb shit. <laughs> Don't tell Scott that. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Soon the only picks, uh, I, Winston's future will be toothpicks. <laughs> oh, Vincent Burke. Soon the only picks in Winston's future will be toothpicks. <laughs> After he eats crabs. <laughs> and uh, Mordecai said, yeah, man, Manning made up for it by throwing touchdowns. Now, let's get to the tweets. All right. Aaron King says... We back, baby. Sean is still coach of the year. See, I love how the, the, <laughs> last year everybody wanted, last week everybody wanted to fire him. He's the best. <coughs> not rest any players. He best not rest any players. If at the end of the season, no division by either. They better play a scrimmage game against LSU on that week off. Positive vibes this week. Buying a box of wine to celebrate. Oh, it sounds like Aaron, you might have had a box of wine when you wrote that tweet. I <laughs> right. <laughs> It was all over the place. Or maybe, maybe that's just Jeff drinking water. He's going to he's gonna screw up everything tonight. I'm not. I'm, I'm reading as I see it. All right. Brandon Bradley says, is it just me or does it feel like the refs took the offseason criticism personally and have been taking it out on the Saints all season? There's your ref thing. Do you feel like, see, I'd like – go ahead. I'd like to know what other fan bases think about – I mean, I guess I know what they think about the refereeing. But, like, if, if refereeing across the board is bad, then – are we really getting screwed? Like, if everybody's right. getting screwed, we really getting screwed. Right. Like, Detroit feels like they've been being screwed for hundreds of years. Look, NFC playoff game last year, whatever, aside, that sucked. But are we really getting screwed this year, or just is everybody getting screwed? Because if everybody's getting screwed equally, we're not getting screwed. Uh, it seems like it's everybody. I mean, you had that play yesterday right. with, the, uh, with the with the Baltimore-Houston game. Like, that was clearly interference. It's. I think a lot of it is when, when we bitched about it last year – all the other fans were like, oh, get over it. And now that it happens to them, you know, oh, now, now it matters. Like, that was to go to the fucking Super Bowl. I, I think I think that's just a lot. Of, but, I, yeah, I think I think it's it's bad across the board. And yeah. just the, and the, the NFL doesn't ever do any – like, they don't do anything about it. They don't do anything to fix it. They're just like, oh, whatever. People are still going to watch. That's the thing. People are still going to watch. <clears throat> it's frustrating. You know, you don't want so giant shit a, like that. Here's a question. All right, so – if the officiating is that bad, then it's got to be a one or of these things. One is it? Do we have too many rules now? Like, is the maybe the officiating isn't bad, and there's just too much to call, and you can't play a game of football. Two players <laughs> are the players are going to do certain things. You know, you're going to hold. It's just you're not getting away with it. I mean, the, the players are going to cheat a little bit, right? That's just part of it, and they're just getting caught more frequently, which means the refs are actually better. At their job. So, or are the, how are the refs seeing? May, I mean, the, are the refs getting certain things that they're looking for? They're going to call it. Or is it fixed? I mean, I don't know. I feel like the, when the refs become this fixed. much. That, that, the, we can let's throw that one out the window. You don't think it's, it's not, fixed? No, it's, it's stupid. It's, it's, it's impo- it'd be Maybe impossible. I'm, Courtney, and I'm not going to far, well, far like, conspiracy theory fix. I'm talking about, though, like, you know, sometimes you there's there's an agenda that needs to be followed. And it's like, you know what? We're going to make sure that you're not so going to pull away. We're going to keep. So What's that? So it's Vince McMahon. It's a WWE. There's a fixed. Yeah, out- yeah. No, that's too far. But there there's a, uh, you know, keep a, keep a game. Keep them in the game and let them win it if they can. So, but, but so what about the, the blowouts? Those There's nothing okay they can too. do with bloods. Yeah. Those are okay too. You can't. Some some games just get away from you, and you just got to let it happen. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's 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 I, fun. I think it's... what it is, honestly is I think that tech. I don't. I think a you're hearing it's social media. You're hearing everybody's opinion instantly. I also think that there's the technology is so great that we. we on my recliner and you and your, your Drew Brees room see more because of the technology and the cameras are the, are the is the skill level of the referees today worse than the skill level it was in the eighties or, or, or do we as fans have more knowledge and more access to different angles and cameras and, and everybody else's opinion that 
it magnifies it. It magnifies it. Or, or has society kind of right, and the the no, rules no. committee turned it into where the refs have to call more. In the past, maybe the refs could let them play. You know, hey, you threw him to the ground. You know, the whole issue about hitting sure. people the wrong way and all that. I mean, at this point, player safety is. I, I guess just more everybody right. bitching out there, and, and and everybody that's calling on your little on the Twitter thing. What, what's the fix? How, how do you fix it? So if we let Jeff fix the refereeing problem, or Joe from Chalmette, or Mordecai, or whoever else is listening to us on the Twitter thing, what's your fix? How do you fix it? We all, we all, we all, we all. I criticize. think you cut back on the rules. All know it's bad, so let's fix it. I think you scale back on the what could be called. On the rules. Yeah. Like on the competition committee yeah. type stuff. Yes. That maybe they maybe they're too nitpicky. Maybe you let people let the players play a little more. Yeah, I mean, I I think a lot of it, like Courtney said, and a lot of it has to do with the like, all these holding calls. If you let them play more, then what's holding anymore? Right. Yeah. I mean, and that was something fair, in this fair. game, like like our defensive backs got cold for some holding. Yeah, there was some holding there, but other times we're kind of ticky tack, whereas it seems like Cam Jordan was clearly getting held this, and <laughs> multiple this is not times. The first game that's happened. Right. I, I feel like now maybe it's just me. Maybe that happens with other teams, pass rushers, but it seems like Cam Jordan gets held a lot and it doesn't get called on him. But I'm only watching Saints games. I'm not watching all well, these other games. Well, this was. And I, look, I don't know this. I'm just playing devil's advocate. But if was Cam Jordan clearly getting held? Was the defensive end for for, for Tampa them, clearly right. getting held? Did you even look at it? No, no, you no, no. You're right. You're right. Because I'm. You're right. For him to get held on every play. You're not looking for. And Gerald that's friend, uh, yeah, yeah. That could definitely be part of it. You know. Either way, he was getting it's, held, and it wasn't getting yeah. called. I mean, I, I don't know what the fix is. I just know, like, yeah, like I, with, with all these new angles that we get to see at home, it just brings – like, you never saw that on TV in the 80s, anything. Right. How, right. You, you, you didn't even get the score, much less all the other fancy shit they have now, plus it's high def. You're it's gonna kind of s- a little bit of all of that, you know, of everything. Just yeah. right, you're right, I'm and, right. And some of it is, like, the players are also bigger and faster. It's harder to see that in real time. Like, it's hard. But my thing is, and I'm going more on the side of you're and Jay, you're talking about calls getting missed. I'm talking about calls getting caught. I'm talking about the game stops after every other play because there's a flag on the ground, and yeah. you, the the game is like the referees have as much camera time as everyone else, maybe more than anybody else. And that to me, when the referee becomes the primary character in the game story the story you've it's no longer a football game anymore and maybe that's a little old school <coughs> and i mean i get it courtney uh, 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 if you're holding you're holding and i'm sorry if you're going to hold on every play you're going to get called for it on every play that's fine if that's what you're going to do but then jason's example of cam jordan i don't know about the other guy but i will say you saw it on cam jordan quite obvious and cam jordan's kind of like a, a good defensive end who commands respect who, He's an all-pro defense fan. Right, Usually, the, those guys get. And the ref, well, the ref just, should be watching for last, him. The ref should, the ref should be watching if he gets held. Just in this last four-minute conversation between us three, Jason, you're calling for less flags or more flags, and Jeff, you're calling for less. So, I'm not necessarily you know, calling for more. The referees can't win. The NFL can't win. I, again, I'm not criticizing because I'm part of this too. But you're calling for more, and you're calling for less. So, what's their answer? More against the teams that we play against, less yeah, against the Saints. Is that so hard? Right. Come on. <laughs> they owe us. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Let's see what the people on the live stream are saying. Yeah, let the players play. I agree. Uh, Chris Farmer need full-time refs for a start. Chris Sansbury. Uh, and that, that is something people are talking about now, full-time refs. Uh, Chris Sansbury says, enough is enough. After they score, they almost have to wait before they can even celebrate. It sucks. Chris Sansbury also says, or even after a big play. Chris Sansbury says, box wine, because he saw you take a sip. He's going to say box wine every time you take a sip. So be it. All right. So thanks for that topic, Brandon Bradley. And the next tweet comes from Mordecai. He says, do you think Marcus Williams is having an all-pro worthy year? He's got four interceptions, one forced fumble, and a touchdown so far. Also, big props to whoever includes the Real Big Fish tunes on the podcast. You don't see a lot of Scott fans out there anymore these days. That's both of us. That's right. Wait, Marcus Williams has four picks? I didn't even realize that. I, th- I tell you what, I was surprised that Vaughn Bell's pick 
Only has one pick. Yeah. This this week, that was the first of his whole career. He's having a great year too. He's having a big time year in a contract year. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get he's gonna get a nice yep. chunk of change this year. He's he's balling out. But it, I think it comes down to to when you're getting a pass rush with your front four, everybody in your defense is better. It just is like it, it's easier to play safety if my front four are getting pressure. Yeah, we don't we don't have to waste a blitz no on a linebacker or a cornerback. That our two safeties are having good years and our two corners are having good years. Our front four is getting pressure. I mean, that's we're we're getting pressure with without necessarily blitzing all the time. I know. <laughs> I think as simple as that. Except we can't get pressure when we rush three. Well, I don't know only, that anybody can. There's not yeah, there's not many teams that can. Right. All right, uh, Big Easy Gajan says uh, it's clear this team goes as the defense goes. Which defensive matchup do y'all like going forward when you look at the remaining schedule? Do you like our defense against Carolina next week? I mean, we tend to play well against the run, and it's fucking McCaffrey. You know, he's number one all-purpose yards running back by far in the league this year. Now, he does catch a lot out of the backfield, too, but I feel like we have – I mean, I don't know. He, he has been a wrecking ball this year. This is going to be a really good matchup to see. But I think I – mean, I didn't expect them to get blown out by Atlanta this week. The wheels might might be falling off them a little bit. I mean, Kyle – uh, Kyle Allen had what three picks, four picks this week. Um, we'll need the dome to be rocking to, to rattle Allen, I think. Um, and it should. <laughs> it should. It wasn't against Atlanta. I think that was a big LSU hangover, in my opinion. But by the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, and if you think about it, the only all right. So we lost to the Rams game for obvious reason. I mean, this team went into shock. All right, we lost, and we, I think we win that game if Drew Brees doesn't go down. We lost to Atlanta because okay, everybody was hungover, even the players and Sean Payton. Uh, so I, you know, you talk about the defense matchups going forward on the schedule. I don't know that there's a team that this, if this team prepares and comes in motivated, they can't lose. They won't lose. This is cl- the best team in the NFL, and that's not just me talking as a fan. All right, so we going. For- uh, Indianapolis is going to be tough. Yeah, you got San Francisco, Indianapolis, and Tennessee are probably the <laughs> best three that we play from here on out. And just just because Tennessee, like, I, like Tennessee's Tennessee's, Tennessee's not great, but like, all right, it's going to be on the road. It's going to be in December. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Now, oh yeah, never mind. We'll get okay. to it. Davis Douglas says, "Are you worried that Drew's perceived diminished arm strength is going to hurt us down the road this year. Although he does lead the league in completion percent, I'm worried about too much reliance on screen and bubble plays. I think in the dome for for 12 years or however many years it's worked. Um, Also, we don't throw the ball down field. Like we don't, I'm okay with it. I just, we're not going to call plays that, that stretch where his arm strength is needed. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not the 2011 offense. And Ted Ginn will probably drop it anyway. In the deep third, deep <laughs> they, I mean, they, they did throw the ball deep a lot this year, right? They just drop them all. <laughs> but, like, I also think if you can get home field advantage, being in the dome can kind of mask some of that. I mean, he did have yeah. he did have two throws against Tampa that were like, ooh. Sounds like, oh, shit, what was that? Like, oh, didn't reach him. Now, 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 I mean, that could have been maybe the receiver and him weren't on the same page or something, but they were really short, but. Yeah, it's not like we rely on giant, explosive, fifty-yard bombs. Right. Every yeah, game. we don't. Right, it's not two thousand eleven. All right. Uh, Jeremy Martin says it's I'm great. A, 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 what? I said, and Thomas isn't Thomas's successful routes aren't deep routes, you know. When you got Traquan blocking for him after he catches. <laughs> It's teamwork. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think it's going to be an issue. They're they're smart enough to mask that. There's there's more, way more things we can do. All right, Jeremy Martin. Uh, it's a it's great that Cook is getting more involved, but I really I'm really looking forward to when the offense has a reliable wide receiver option other than Mike Thomas. Hoping that Kirkwood will be that guy. Smith mm-hmm. may start lighting it up, but I've already seen more from Kirkwood. I mean, more than likely, you're gonna have to wait until next year for a, a reliable second wide receiver. But Kirkwood will be back. I mean, I, you know, I'm not expecting a ton out of him. I wouldn't put you yeah. put all your hopes and dreams on Keith Kirkwood. Hey, if, if it works out, great. But yeah, 
I don't want to get my hopes up. I kind of know what we are at this point. You know who you thought you were. All right. Wait, the, the, the guy just said that he's already seen more of Kirkwood. Kirkwood's played this year? I'm, I, have, I think I he's referring to last year. Okay. I think he, he maybe he played a week Kirkwood this year before getting hurt. What? I don't remember seeing Kirkwood do anything this year, and I thought that's what he was saying, that he's already seen enough out of Kirkwood. And I'm like, well, I must have missed that one. <laughs> he might have he might have played a week or two this year before getting hurt, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's forgettable, season. apparently. All right, who cares? All right, Adam, right. <laughs> Adam Gross watching. Renee's watching. Christian's watching. Uh, Mordecai, Kyle Allen threw four interceptions against the Falcons secondary on Sunday. I think our defense is in for another big pick day. That'd be fucking fantastic. I'd like another pick. It was nice to get a pick six this week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, we got a comment on Facebook uh, from Davis Douglas, and it's he'd love to hear our thoughts about on the Browns Steelers incident, and Miles Garrett, Mason Rudolph. But what I'm going to do is save that for final thoughts. All right. Cause... <laughs> I was going to say, do we have to? Because yeah. we'll talk about it in the final thoughts. I think it's worth at least discussing for a minute or, or in a half or something. So, but in the meantime, let's get into pickums. Again, do we have to? <laughs> Man, Jeff, can you continue your your upward trend? I can't believe it. You went three and two this week. You are now up to twenty seven and twenty three. You know that dance? After, I mean, at some point, you were you were fucking rotten after the first like three or four weeks of the season. Is this against the spread? Y'all do it? Yes, oh, yeah. yes, it is against the spread. Nice. Um. So yeah, so you're at 27, 23. I went two and three this week, so I'm now at 25 and 25 at a nice yeah. 500. I mean, I'm only two games ahead of you. <laughs> right. It just seems like more from where you from where you came from. Oh, and I'm yeah. just I, I mean, I have outplayed you for like ten weeks in a row. Yeah, I've I've put together a bunch of a bunch of two and threes. I'm I'm in kind of middling. I don't know what uh, Washington. That's stupid. And the Bears are stupid. <laughs> All right, Very stupid. And I'll read you the larger league here. Uh, we got Sands Hobbs in sole possession of first place, 33 and 17, followed by Mordecai Greenbaum. Jake, my son, is in fourth place. He went 5 and 0 this week. You need, to, you, need to, you need to start making some money off that. Right? CJG, D, Desi, then Drew, my other son, Jake's brother. Uh, How big is the screen you're looking at? It's uh, 17 inch, I guess. I don't know. It just looks like it's. Because you're staring at me right now at the camera. Yeah, the camera's right here. The monitor, and then it just looks like you're looking yeah. at a big old screen. It is. It's big. I got four screens. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> four skins? <laughs> <laughs> then Tom Ensign, Wheels, Christian Mino, me, Who That Fits, Ryan Angier, Davis Douglas, Trevor Scott Bruno, Jason, Big Easy Mafia. So, Jason, yeah, you you start the 500 club. Big Easy Mafia, okay. ne- Neil. I thought Neil was one game over 500, but no, he's not. No, Neil's right along with me. We're cool. I got to say, so my kids do listen to the show, and they can't wait for pickums every week. And because we always ragged on Neil in the beginning because he was also a bottom basement dweller, uh, this week they asked the first thing they got in the car before they even want to know their own records. They were like, how'd Neil do this week? <laughs> <laughs> so they're cheering for you, Neil. Triple D Kennels, Oh Who That Be, Me So Mad, The Mailman, James, King Nola, Chris McGuire, DJ Z, finally, Big Easy Guy, John, you – have the horse's ass award right now. So, Jason, what's our games so far? All right. Uh, I don't know. Are the bye weeks over? Do we? I think we have one more week of buys. So we, we got a couple teams on bye. Yeah, I know Minnesota's on bye. Um, we'll start off with our first game, Battle of the AFC South. Um, again, it just feels like it, it was hard. It's not like there's a there's a gigantic great slate of games. Jacksonville Jaguars coming off uh, a loss this week, big time loss. Even though they got Big Dick Nick back. Uh, they travel to Tennessee to play the Titans, who I believe are coming off a bye. Uh, ever since the switch to Ryan Tannehill, they've been playing a little better. Derrick Henry had a massive 180-yard rushing game before the bye week. Uh, this is in t- DJ Chark, I think, leads the AFC in touchdown catches with eight so far. So he's having a good year, former Tiger. This is in Tennessee. Titans favored by three. Hmm. I don't know what the weather is going to be like. I know it's it's warming up here, but it's a front's going to be come, moving through like Saturday, so I don't know when that's going to hit Tennessee. But I don't know. But you, you still got Nick Foles, Jacksonville, um, and then Tannehill leading leading the Titans. I'll go first. I'll go with Tennessee. I feel like I've been burned with Jacksonville several times this year, so I, I think I'm off the Jacksonville train. 
<laughs> I tend to agree, and you guys are sitting here talking about how Tennessee's good, so yeah, I'll take Tennessee. Is that what we said? You did. You said Tennessee was going to be the hardest game the Saints played in 35 years. I thought it was I'm sorry, 35 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> in the snow, uphill. Right. Courtney, are you taking a pick, or are you going to just let us play? Um, No, I'm taking a pick. All right, come on. Um. Jacksonville, just to be different than y'all. All right. All right. So speaking of, Courtney, uh, Luke only went one and four, so you, you don't have to do much to, to beat uh, Luke's pickums when he we was We should combine, course. like, Dave, Romero, Gunn, Luke, Gun, Courtney. Our guest Luke. pick, all for, like, that's one team since they only play one week a year. Okay. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah, I like that. we'll combine them and see how our guests do. All right. All right. Our next game, uh, one of the two games of the week, the Dallas Cowboys. Coming off a win against Detroit this week, Dak Prescott, everybody's like, oh, well, maybe Dak is the MVP. I mean, he's thrown for a lot of E3 for 400 yards. Yeah. I, that's what – you know. it's the media. It's Dallas. They love sucking off Dallas, and, of course, they, they're going to do that. Uh, they traveled to New England to play a 9-1 and Patriots yeah. team who did win this week but only won by seven. Uh, they covered. They, I want to guess – I want to guess the spreads. So I don't say it. They, uh, they, they, they seem to struggle when they don't have to play the uh, AFC East. You know, when they have to play a real team, New England's not this won. dominant, uh, as LeBron would say, juggernaut. They did still win, 17-10. They covered. This game, this game is in Foxborough. So they're 9-1, <laughs> hmm? so and, and you're know, like, they struggle against other teams. I, mean. <laughs> I said they struggle against teams outside. They, they win, Courtney, but they, 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 won they by don't. seven points, okay? Right? That's it. Come on. Sorry, They're probably I'm, home dogs. I, that's what it sounds like. Courtney, are you going to guess? No, it it's going to be New England. That's my guess. New England minus seven. I'll say four. Courtney was a lot closer. It was six and a half. Oh. Six and a half. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll I'll go first on this one, and I will take New England to cover at home against Dallas. Take that, fatty. I'm gonna go with. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm gonna go with Dallas. There it is. Just to cover. Separate. They're gonna lose, but they're gonna cover. This is where we separate. I'm gonna go with it. New England. That would be this for y'all. New. <laughs> be, be careful, which you. I, there's all kinds of crazy hand signals these days. You don't want to Shit. do something. You shouldn't. Who <laughs> knows? <laughs> New anybody, anybody can could photo can uh, screen grab. <laughs> Mordecai says, "Guns a billionaire." Thanks to my pick of my vice. <laughs> yes. All right, our next game. Uh, this is if that wasn't the game of the week, then this one is the Green Bay Packers coming off a bye. They're sitting there. I believe they're at eight and two, tied with the Saints. They travel to San Francisco to play the currently number one seed, San Francisco 49ers. They came off a win against Arizona. It was a close game for a while. They scored late and then tacked on another late uh, a late touchdown there. This game's in Frisco. 49ers favored by three. Oh, that's it, huh? I wanted to guess it. Sorry, I'll be quiet for the next two, so I'll let you guess the next two. All right. Two. I'm going to go first. 49ers minus three. Yep. In, <laughs> in, for, in San Fran. In San Francisco, or whatever city they play. Night, right, it gets flexed to Sunday night. Yeah. I'm going to go Green Bay. Oh. Interesting. I'm going to go Green Bay as well. Wow. I, you know, I you're starting to make me switch to Green Bay, but I won't. I'm going to stick to my original thought and say San Francisco wins this game. I think San Francisco is a real team. So you is know, Green I, Bay. But I am kind of, I am kind of hoping San Francisco wins because then we got to play San Francisco anyway. So if the Saints can be, for, you know, oh, like yeah, Green Bay, thing, we, we got to pull for San Francisco. Right, right, right. Yeah, let's San, let, let San Fran win, and then and then San Francisco <laughs> come here. We can beat them, and maybe Seattle beat them again. Maybe Seattle loses the Rams or something. And San Francisco yeah. will win. Bye. Okay. Four. Okay. We shall see. Even if they just win by two, that means. We win. <laughs> all, right, all right, our next game. I picked this just because it seems like this might be an entertaining game and there wasn't much else. The Tampa Bay Bucks, coming off the loss to us last week, traveled to the resurgent Atlanta Falcons, who are doing everything they can to hashtag save Dan Quinn. <laughs> the Saints were doing everything they could to hashtag save Dan Quinn. Hey, we, we, the, 
the Saint, the Saint, we started a trend. Save Dan Quinn. <laughs> All right. It's so, out of, it's in yep, Atlanta. It's, it's, it's in shit Atlanta. It's going to be um, Atlanta minus two and a half or three. Somehow it's four and a half. Oh. All of a sudden, four. all of a sudden Vegas believes right. in Atlanta. Or maybe it's like, oh, Jameis is coming to town. That's three picks. They turned four their picks. season around. And Atlanta got four picks last week against Allen. Huh. All right. Jason, you want to go first? or? Um, I guess. I will if you are not ready. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, you're not going to change my mind. I just I feel dirty making this pick. Uh, I think we're going to make the same pick. Is it a bird? A dirty bird? I mean. Pick them. It's fine. Uh, it's okay. You know why I'm taking it? I'll say it. I'm taking Atlanta, and I'll say it because the Saints just beat Tampa Bay, sending them into, would you say, a tailspin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, is it? I know Atlanta won twice, but, like, they, they sucked. Like, are all of a sudden they are they don't suck? Now, it's not like Tampa's good either, though. Oh. <sighs> I just I can't give me Tampa. I can't. <laughs> can't. You t- you taking Tampa? Wow, I love it when you make emotional picks. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, wait on the stream. Uh, Brandon Bailey says Atlanta did an opposite tailspin. What was that called last week? A <laughs> tails up. Tails up. <laughs> Atlanta went tails up. I'm going Tampa. Oh yeah, is that an emotional pick or is that a? No, I, I just think the. This is the NFL, and I, I like the idea that Atlanta's won two in a row. They're they're going to stumble at some point, and Tampa got beat last week. And okay, Jameis has been kind of off and on. He's yeah. been or off and on. But well, I mean, really, like if you look at like two picks, probably weren't his fault. I mean, the OJ Howard one wasn't his fault. This so just seems I, like a game that Vegas is going to have wrong, and Tampa's going to go in and win the game, and and Atlanta. Is what its record is. That's a, this does seem like it should be a two, two and a half point spread, and Vegas just because they won twice against two good teams, Vegas kind of bumped up the line a little bit. Uh, all right, speaking of bumping up the line, let's move to our shitty game of the week. That wasn't I was, it. <laughs> I, I was, I was very tempted. There were some <laughs> other games that were kind of tempted. Yeah, but, but Washington's playing next week, aren't they? Well, they playing Miami. No, they did that a few weeks ago. That was that was the shittiest. That was the shittiest game of all time. Washington Miami. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, no, we're gonna go with the New York Football Giants. Oh, last week it was the Jets. Now it's the Giants. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Giants. Stick in New York. Um, they travel to Chicago to play a Bears team. Who you talk about a tailspin? <laughs> the original tailspin. The, right, right. They they are they are the originators of the tailspin. I, their coach I think sucks. Their QB sucks. It's going to get brought up all the time that they traded up to drafted Mitch Mitchapalooza when they could have just stayed pat and drafted uh, Watson or Mahomes. But uh, it's, it's in Chicago. <laughs> Courtney, uh, it's in Chicago. Uh, Chicago minus three. Chicago minus six. Ooh, what? Because even take, even. Hmm. Well, that's, that's how bad the Giants are. Well, it's also it, it's crazy though, but like Trubisky, his play has been so bad, it's dragged down this good defense. Like this defense is mediocre now because they know, yeah, they got fucking Trubisky, we can't win. And now they if, go and miss field goal. Now they they they're having kicking problems again. All of a sudden. Well, they've had kicking problems for a while. But I guess there's a question here because Chase Daniel came into the game last night. Does Chase Daniel start this week? They're saying Trubisky has a hip injury. <laughs> Just like Jameis Winston's ankle injury. <sighs> so 20 bucks uh, says Jameis Winston plays next week. I mean, I don't know. Six points seems like a lot for the Bears to give up. It does. But, it, but it's a rookie quarterback it's in Chicago. If Chase Daniel plays, I think the Bears win by seven. So I'm going to go with the Did Bears. Think? I think Chase Daniel. Yeah, I, I'm going to take the Bears on this one for uh, who knows why. But yeah. All right. So, Wait, so to Gordon recap. No, he did. He no, the Giants. So, so to recap, we got Jacksonville at Tennessee. Tennessee favored by three. 
Dallas at New England. Pats favored by six and a half. <laughs> Green Bay at San Fran. San Fran favored by three. Tampa Bay at Atlanta. Falcons favored by four and a half. And then the Giants at Chicago. Bears favored by six. All right. And so make sure you get your tweets in. Uh, hashtag pickems. I'll record them. I'll like them when I record them. And we'll post the results every Monday morning. And in the meantime, which I want to do some game preview. Let's do it. Saints preview. Okay. So, so Saints come back home hosting the Carolina Kitties. Coming off two losses in a row for them. Yeah. <laughs> As is tradition. Um, well, not really, but <laughs> Cam Newton is out. He's out all I year. I mean, he's, he's on IR, right? Then they yeah. put him on, like, mental IR. Yeah, and, and, and Kyle Allen didn't look that bad, but, I mean, I guess Atlanta, apparently, he was he was dog shit, and that's not a good defense either. It was so I, us. I almost don't know what to make of Carolina other than I know McCaffrey is going to get the ball, and McCaffrey is awesome. Do you game plan, and you've been talking about McCaffrey all year, Jason, do you game plan if you're Sean Payton – just stack the box, make Kyle Allen beat you, just commit everything to McCaffrey. But it's not just it's not just stack the box. Like yes, he runs, but he also catches a shit ton of passes too. Mm-hmm. But I mean, clearly you're going to game plan against him. But it's kind of like Kyle Michael on. Thomas. Like you can game plan all you want. I mean, teams know this is the guy, and yet he still gets open because he's he's, he's a good player. He's still gotten a bunch of stats, just like Michael Thomas. So you put a spy on him, and you put like a safety valve, like maybe not a maybe. literal safety, but a somebody to be a safety net. I don't know, Garner Johnson, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Demario Davis as your backup. I mean, their defense doesn't seem to be too fearsome if they're giving up twenty something points to Atlanta. I don't know. One of those was a kick return, but still. Um, are you I, worried? I don't know that... Are you worried? <sighs> And, and if, I, so what worries you? Why would you? Why are, is it the Atlanta game that now makes you worried that we? It's it, the divisional game, and they're a good football team, and and, and they're they're desperate at five and five. They're desperate right now, like their hey, season's on the line. Four games with five to play. I mean, they're, this is this is a must win for them. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the spread on our game? Uh, I, well, I, you, no, no, no. Actually, you know what? I saw. I'm gonna I saw say, it. Let me guess. Saints minus. Six. Uh, what, hold on, I thought it was more actually. When I saw when I saw the oh. first line for it, I was like, "Whoa, yeah, it's it's nine and a half." Shit. Yeah, Shit. that's a they're really overvaluing Atlanta for the win last week and devaluing Carolina after after that game last week. Yeah, I saw the spread and I'm like, "That's too much." Who's Carolina's receivers? Do they Samuel? Have uh, yeah, they. DJ actually, DJ Moore, DJ Moore. And, and Samuel, who really aren't bad. They still have Greg Olson. I mean, he's old, but he's he, he still, you know, can't get it done. I, I think this game rule <laughs> – this is not a hard game for the Saints to win if the Saints show up. And I think that you know, it goes back to I'm still – I'm a little scarred from that Atlanta game, and I have some trust issues right now. And it's going to take a couple of games of showing up to convince me that that was the anomaly. Like I, I, I worry about playing down to your opponent. Although they I mean, I didn't do it in, in Tampa. Is my guess. Hmm? Saints win. Carolina covers the spread. Is my guess. Yeah, it's not a half. Seems like even though the Saints may get out to big lead, like just it's, McCaffrey, it's McCaffrey, McCaffrey like, right? Like McCaffrey could just take a pass and go seventy yards and be like, oh shit, now it's a four point game. Kind of like what happened in the playoff game a couple years ago. Like we had him beat the whole time, and then McCaffrey went nuts in the second half, and it made it like close for a second. I kind of so, think so that don't run a prevent defense in the second quarter. <sighs> Definitely not. And I would assume we're still going to be without Lattimore, <coughs> if I had to guess. Which, um, no, I mean, again, if you're going to be without Lattimore, this might be a game, an okay game to, to be with that. I'd be more concerned with him missing the Tampa game than this game. And but that, I wonder if out for us. But there's also the worry of you, you put so much effort on stopping on stopping McCaffrey, and then their receivers beat you somehow. Well, it's not like you're gonna just not cover them. Well, I know, I know, but I mean, look, McCaffrey is the guy. If we stop McCaffrey, we're gonna win the game. 
Right. Like even that's, that's the crazy and so it's like weird. They, even like even though last week Carolina only scored three points last week, like McCaffrey still got me thirty PPR fantasy points, which is kind of insane. I didn't expect that, but so he he could still get a shit ton of yards against you. Well, like Will but, says here, you put two spies on him, make sure one of them is Russian. Of course. <laughs> but well, is, that nobody have anything to do with it? <laughs> so is can you you know <laughs> like Kyle Brandon Allen? Bradley brings up a good point. He says, you know, people have film on Kyle Allen now. I mean, the the, the reason he was and Sean Payton and uh, uh, Dennis Allen and Mike Nolan, those guys getting in a the room, they're going to be able to. Kyle Allen's not a threat. Christian McCaffrey, his talent is the threat, not, and I think the Saints can answer. We have enough talented guys on our defense to stop being so scared of Christian McCaffrey. I'm sorry. He's going to hopefully he's lead me in, in my fantasy team. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm scared. Well, it's all going to come down to, I said it, I said it earlier, the, the, the pass rush. If we can get pressure with four guys and disrupt Allen, we'll, we'll win pretty easily yeah. if – if we give Allen time and don't give and, and don't get a pass rush right. with McCaffrey, doesn't matter if you double team or Brad, whatever you're going to do. Some they're, they're, you give any quarterback time, they're going to find a hole in the defense. You rush him, you rush his throw to McCaffrey and jump the pass, and Demario Davis is in the end zone with six points. How about if we rush him with Russian spies? <laughs> That's dude. I just said that from Wheels like five minutes ago. No, you said Clam. spy. Out of <laughs> spies. <laughs> All right, Mordecai says Carolina's receivers are Christian McCaffrey, CMC, and Christian McCaffrey. Did I mention Christian McCaffrey? All right, so in, at the end of the day, Jason, you are right. He will score. He will rack up some yards. He will produce. But at the end of the day, we'll, he, they, they won't be able to keep up the pace with the Saints often in the Superdome. So I'm predicting a high-scoring game. I'm going to say Saints 44 Jesus. to wow. 31. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, granted, we we all did predict fifty burgers for the Atlanta game, and that didn't come to pass. I am going to go much lower. I am going to go twenty-seven to seventeen. Ten point game. Okay. Twenty-six twenty. Oof. Whew. Damn. You go into the game, Courtney. Uh, I'm working the beginning of it, and then I don't know if I'm going to stay or early. I could, could pay a visit to 648 for a little bit just to say hi. If there's an open seat, but I, I don't want to play musical chairs, you know. I'll, I'll what, text you if there's an open seat. <laughs> I want to get to where I'm going and, that, and finish the game where I start the game, you know. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. All right, that's all we got for the Saints preview. And so, hey, Gunn just joined. Gunn, you missed all of Mordecai's picks. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) But I'm sure he – look, Mordecai, you're watching. Gunn, you're watching. Y'all talk to each other. Mordecai, tell him all your picks. In the meantime, uh, let's do a quick – for the final thoughts, I'm going to give you your final thought, and that is going to be what uh, Davis Douglas asked us earlier. Uh, Your thoughts on the whole Mason Rudolph, Kyle Allen story from last week. Kyle Allen? Where, where, you, you, why do you have Kyle, Kyle Allen? Allen? I meant you Miles definitely Garrett. said Kyle Allen. <laughs> Kyle, Miles, whatever. I thought you said Allen Kyle. <laughs> My, Garrett Grayson. <laughs> All right, so what do you think? I mean, and by now, I guess everybody knows uh, what happened. Looks like, looks like the stream Miles is... Garrett has been suspended indefinitely. Hold on. looks like the stream is, is a little iffy right I now. I see that, but we're recording still, and they can hear it. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess I don't know. Maybe he's lucky that he didn't. I mean, he he could he could have killed him with the swing, but I mean, I don't know. It's should should he have done it? Clearly not. It was is the heat of the moment. It was the end of the game. But I don't know. Everybody wants everybody wants to have a point on it. Everyone wants to have this. I'm like, like I don't know. I've never played fucking football. I don't know how you get into the moment like. Like you know, like didn't didn't he try to rip his helmet off first? Not, not that I'm excusing Garrett for swinging. Like you should never swing a fucking helmet at a guy, but he just kind of <laughs> wildly swung it. You know, he's not no, thinking. He oh shit, his head's right there. What's he that? He swung the tent to hit him. 
Yeah. He went wild swinging the he helmet. Did. He did. He hung. was with the oh, tent, tent He mouth. aimed and he hit his target. Yeah. I mean, you, you watching it. So the, the everybody's debating over, like, saying, like, oh, well, Mason started it. Mason started it, so he's at fault. You know, and that – my issue with all this is it's more like, – Whatever those two guys do, you know, Miles Garrett's suspended indefinitely. Fine, there's your punishment. Whoever else, whatever. But my outrage is directed at society. And Courtney, you brought up the Twitter and the talking and social media people and all that, and how all these people are so outraged. Just the worst offense anybody. You know, you got school shootings, you got all this <laughs> stuff, and people are more worked up over this than they are everything else. And then. Three days later, something else happens and nobody's talking about it anymore. It's like, oh, where's all the outrage? And they're always talking about like what he was doing and he did this and he shouldn't have done that. But at the same time, you, the guy did hit somebody with a helmet. I don't care what happened in order to make him make that choice, but it is not Mason Rudolph's fault that Miles Garrett made that choice. You know what I mean? But until he hit him with the helmet, this was a standard football fight. You know what I mean? Right. Even even trying to unsnap and rip your helmet off. That part even. Kyle Turley years ago with the, against the Jets, he ripped the helmet off and threw it down the field. I mean, so when you go and hit somebody and make that choice, you can't blame anybody else or any situation for the choice you made. I understand that it was a heated situation and you made the choice, but it's still not anybody else's fault. It's your responsibility that you made that choice. Nobody it's interesting. To think, like, where's the line – when it's not football, like when does a policeman have to come out there and like, like when, when, when is it not assault? When is it not football? That's right? Like, actually not assault. That's battery. Assault is like the, the verbal yeah, threat. Battery the is the, the last hit. boy scout. When, when you, he takes it out and he takes a gun out of his Jersey and he shoots the defense. <laughs> it's back. I, I know that's, that's broad, but what I'm saying, like that would be clearly where the, where the police have to get involved. Clearly where where's the line but like how much further would miles garrett have to go before, before he, like he got arrested sideline right before he would get arrested and, and cuffed and walked off the field eh, i think like, big, right. big, well and you're right because like you think about this is their work this is their office now if courtney if you swung a football helmet and hit your co-worker in or you know somebody in the office in the head you would be arrested or at least you'd be kicked out maybe fired whatever right I mean, you can't right. do that, <laughs> right? And that's, that's, I guess, that's what I'm saying. Like, at but, some point, either either but, he crossed it, or it's very, very close to crossing it, where it's not football anymore. If he would have hit him with the other side of the helmet, the top part of the helmet, and what if Miles, I mean, or, or Rudolph would have uh, would have been knocked out or had a seizure on live TV? Oof. Would would he have been arrested with the same same one swing like that? I mean, but but you're right, and but also the uh, and I, I'm glad you're asking like what is the line and where's the line because and you're not trying to say the it's line the one... either cross it or it's very close. Well, what but it's it's not a one to one. It's not an office. You know what I mean? This isn't J.C. Penney or something where people you do. This is a football field where part of the job is hitting. Is I love pushing, all the options fighting. out there about normal everyday jobs. You threw out. J.C. Penny. J.C. Penny. Uh, are they still around? Yeah. Right. It doesn't exist anymore. And normal jobs. It does exist in my town. <laughs> Service <laughs> merchandise. Yeah. Eddie Bauer. TGNY. <laughs> J.C. Penny. <laughs> the first. It's like the thing about Mark Teller moment. It was like, oh god, I don't know. <laughs> Empty your head. That's the first thing that popped in my head. So, I mean, and everybody said, oh, he's a punk for doing – you know, it may, I, yeah, it was wrong, but I'm also not going to judge him so harshly. I mean, it's the heat of – have you ever done anything stupid in your life in the heat of the moment? Well, certainly, and if if I ever would have done something as stupid as taking a helmet and hit somebody, swung and hit somebody with it in front of four million people – there would be consequences and there were right. And, 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 and I'm okay with him being suspended for the year. And oh, yeah. I'm yeah. okay with him being taught a lesson and cause you have to set an example for future fights in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But you know, the bar is only going to get right. 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 But, 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 but again, right, you have to do it. Cause again, like what if, 
Like, what if he hit him somewhere? Like, what if somebody died on the field on live? Television? But he didn't. I, I know he didn't, but you know, you you can't you can't risk having that. Ha- like, but that's in the rules already. That it's uh, that's the whole. Everybody's looking for more, more, more. But it's in the rule. There is a rule that says you cannot hit another player with a helmet like that. You can't take it off, swing a helmet, and hit a player. That is well, in the rule book. Argument. Who's arguing that he shouldn't be punished? Well, it's not. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. He should definitely be punished. Like what more could be done? What they've done is right. This is the one, the one time that the NFL has gotten it right. They swiftly suspended him. He's out indefinitely. Yeah, yes yeah, 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 yeah. And he might yeah. not play again. We'll wait and see. But he's been punished. So, what I, I'm you talk about? I don't like the piling on. All right, he's he did what he did. He got his punishment. No need to like kick the man at this point. Like, oh, he's a fuck that motherfucker. He should die. We ought to storm the. You know, like okay, you know, he he but did. It's 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 it's, it's, it. it's internet outrage. Yeah, he's the punishment's fine for what it, for what happened. <laughs> right. I just I, I guess my I put no blame on Mason uh, Rudolph. No, no, I don't either. Put any blame, like you said, Jeff, for justifying Garrett's action. Like, right. I mean, now you want to isolate what Mason Rudolph did, and like, let's say Miles Garrett never did swing. The but helmet. what he did was they, Rudolph, what he did was within the football. Yeah, fight. He just was fighting. Unwritten rules yeah, he, now he, yeah, he might be called a hothead for fighting because he took a late hit and kicking a guy in the balls. So in isolation, yeah, Mason Rudolph acted childish. Right. But but what Mason Rudolph did is punishable by a fifteen yard penalty. <laughs> right. what, it's not bad. What Garrett did is punishable by suspension, and 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 you could argue the you know yeah law. But now Mason Rudolph and his camp wanting to take le- maybe consider taking legal action. I think that is too far to be honest with you. Like, what are you going to sue him for? Mental distress? Well, I mean, what you're going to pay your hospital bill? The team's going to pay for that. I mean, what, what are you what are you suing him for? Or are you going to press charges? I don't, I don't think he's going to, or, or I, I don't think he should, but that, they're not going to do it with that. <laughs> David Gunn says, Garrett's a good guy off the field, real bad guy on it. <laughs> <laughs> His mama I, swears he's a good boy. Right. I'll, I'll bet. <laughs> Eli Apple's mama swears he's a good boy, too. Right. right. And she's right. Yeah, she's right. All she's right. always right. So I, so I, I don't know. Derek donated some money to charity, and he did not hit a kid with his helmet. So yeah, I mean, they're all good off the field. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. So I guess in summary, I think the bottom line is a thing happened, and the <laughs> the league got the punishment right, and it, let let at this point, like, move on with your lives, people. There's no need to pile on. Is how I feel about it. It's not a and- race thing. It's not a, uh, it's not a Miles Garrett deserves to be punished even more thing. It's not Mason Rudolph started it. It's just it happened. It's football. Well, and, and I think people people are going to move on in two weeks. Nobody's going to be talking. Well, about they it. already have moved on. Okay, <laughs> we're the only ones talking about it. That's <laughs> and, uh, only because uh, Davis Douglas asked us to. All right, so for real, any other final thoughts? If you, so, we don't end on such a negative note. Um. I'm excited. I don't know how many of you guys out there have uh, Disney Plus, but The Mandalorian's got two episodes in the can that are out there, and that's been pretty good so far. Yeah. Survivor w- was interesting this yeah. week. You know, that's a big topic of discussion, Survivor, with with what happened. But uh, Me too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, enjoying me some uh, – a little, little bit of TV. So <laughs> – all right, Mordecai, I mean, you guys got any thoughts about the Kaepernick situation? We can only handle uh, one. Right, one major topic. Of one week, major right. topic. Of <laughs> Social topic. I mean, I was going to talk about the Pelicans, but, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to do that or not. 17 minutes. Um, if you want to make your final thought about it. I mean, uh, I don't know, me, Klobo? Me, you, me, him, you, you. No, well, he didn't bring it up. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Well, I think the Pelicans are. I, I I think this is. I mean, I would have drawn it up this way, no. But I think it's a blessing in disguise getting all these younger guys, these minutes, and you can see different pieces and parts shining. Um, though though the team may not be winning, you see the individuals shining, and I, I think, I think the Pelicans are going to get 
healthy and go on a very impressive run that may or may not lead to the playoffs, but it's certainly going to continue the excitement into the off season. Um, I just hope the you know if the hole's not too big by the time Zion gets back, I think we're going to make a strong push at the end of the season to 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 playoffs. The, the team is just way too talented to to um, to continue going through the year at, at this pace. Um, you you, you tomorrow would tomorrow night get a win tomorrow y- night. Yeah, you would hope so. I do like seeing Alexander Walker and Hayes getting minutes because I yeah. didn't anticipate. And look, Hayes wasn't ready, but if you force him to the fire, he, he's gonna get. <laughs> it's gonna help his growth long term. But I am still just the freaking the. The, the injuries that this franchise has is just continues to be a little mind boggling. I like, I don't, Classic I don't know. What to, I, just, I, don't, I don't know what to say anymore. Like I, we got the best trainer in the league and we upgraded our facilities and just doesn't matter. Well, like, are we, is, is, are, are we cursed? A, a trainer doesn't prevent injuries. A trainer, a good trainer gets, gets them back from back an injury. Quickly, right. But like, like, but like half, half the team's hurt. Quickly. Like half the team's hurt right now. Um, I think we're getting three or four of them back. Your tomorrow. trainer stretched too thin. Oh man, I got everybody. Over. <laughs> I think two, two or three or four are going to be back tomorrow, Jason. Um, obviously okay. not Honor and and uh, right, right, Darius Miller, but I, I think maybe Favors is out tomorrow. But I think okay, but like morning. like like Ingram will be back. Maybe Frank will be back. I think Frank Ingram Lonzo. I think Josh Hart's still going to be out. I mean, that is one thing. Like, I've been excited to see. Like, I'm I, I, Frank Jackson has really played well to me Frank this year. Frank deserves all the minutes in the world. I think. Um, I've I've been disappointed in Lonzo so far. Yeah. I I, I thought he'd be better. I, I've heard on the inside that there's some shit going on in his life that that's non basketball related. That right. He's right. With. Okay. <laughs> I mean, take that with a grain of salt. Who knows right. if that's true or not? But, but he's right. I mean, I, I thought he I, – I was really excited for him. I thought he'd be better. But I'm, I'm going to be very excited when Zion finally I, comes back. I, I'll say this. If, if Lonzo was playing at, like, the way Frank is now, I'd be ecstatic. And so the fact that one of them is, mm-hmm. to me, is, is, is awesome for the team. Like, it doesn't matter if it's Frank or Lonzo. If one of them's playing at that level, then good. The other one and, – and honestly – Shit, if it's Frank, if it's Frank, I, I'd feel I feel better about about Frank playing. Than Frank, right? Um, I'm not saying we are, but I'm just saying like Frank deserves the minutes right now, and whatever happens with Lonzo happens, you know. Yeah, yeah. But Ingram's but, been a I mean Ingram's been a, a plush. Drew's finally out of his own way. Favors right. with the last three or four games was great. You know Hayes and and Naw are doing well. Again, I mean, that's the thing. Like it, it's stepping up. I mean, this team is going to put it together and go on a strong run. And hopefully, man, if we're if we're three under five hundred by the time Zion gets back or better, we're we're in a good spot. Yeah, they could still make a run. I yeah. just hope you know. I, I still think Gentry's middling. I just hope <laughs> that, you know. I mean, we'll 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 see. But I, I like I said, I like the young guys getting getting the experience now. Is only going to help them, yeah. Help them going forward. So yeah, it, so again, like it, you struggle now. I mean, you you hate to lose. There was so much momentum coming into the season. You hate to get off to a slow start and then lose some of that momentum, especially with you know football season and Saints and LSU being like, holy shit, best offense in football. So hopefully, the the excitement when Zion comes back will, will be a big plus. It'll be another yeah. It'll be another steroid shot. Yeah, it'll be a shot in the arm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And with that, we'll say that's all the show we have for you right now. We're going to thank our loyal listeners for downloading each week and telling all of your friends about the Dove Patrol podcast. You can follow us on Twitter for daily conversation, like us on Facebook to watch the live broadcast, subscribe on YouTube to watch or listen as an alternative to your podcast app. And if you want to listen to us the old fashioned way, there is Dome Patrol podcast. Dak him. Say bye bye, donkeys. Bye bye, crab leg donkeys. Crab legs. Uh, Winston. Learning. Sammy, shut up. <laughs>